it, ha- it has been nearly nine years since the time I put on a shirt, jumped on a Skype call, and uh, yeah, joined the Gravity Sketch co-founders on this sort of a journey to kind of solve or at least really help people with 3D collaboration and communication. But there was a phase before me where it wasn't even a software product. Um, as I joined in, we entered the sort of iPad app era phase. It was, you know, the big part of our focus there was using a piece of hardware that people had and were comfortable with to deliver a, an experience to let people sketch in 3D, create and, and draw in 3D. Since those days, we've been far faster um, and it really helped set the tone for how we built the, the VR application, I guess. Um, you know, I'd, I'd say in all of the onboarding sessions to everyone who joins Gravity Sketch, like um, the VR is not like the, the focus of the Gravity Sketch company, but it is one of the best platforms for us to to deploy the solution that we've built and, and to kind of build experiences around 3D. Seeing and understanding a 3D model is extremely easy. It's human. Uh, it's there in the room with you. You can hold it in your hand. You can walk around it. It's a very comfortable and natural way to understand a 3D model. And two, the, the controllers mean that the interface that you have with the computer is your body. It's, it's the gestures you make, the emotion, the, the form, the way that you move your body is the way that you control the software. And for creative use cases, that's incredibly powerful. The original Quest probably was the biggest like leap, you know, in terms of going from something that was chained to your desk and very expensive to something that you can put in a box and take with you or put in your backpack or suitcase or something. The most obvious one is just they put way more powerful chips in there. Like the the Quest 1 to 2 to 3 has gone from like the XR1 to the 2 to the 2 Plus or something like that. But in terms of actual power, like I feel like we're three or four times more powerful than where we originally started at. Definitely they've come up with some really cool technologies like foveated rendering and all, all kinds of stuff that like help um, help the device render less things so that it can be more performant. Um, but as well, like when the Quest 2, for example, first came out, um, it was running at about maybe a half the, the full power of the chip and that was as, as powerful as it could possibly be. And over the last couple of years, we've seen them gently like chip away at that, give us 10% here, 20% there, 10% here. Um, and so the device is literally, the same device has been getting more and more powerful as they feel more comfortable, you know, giving it more more oomph, I guess. Yeah, with the Quest 3, it's another huge jump up in the actual chip itself. Um, the CPU and the GPU are way more powerful. They've got more RAM in there. Internally, performance is definitely something we're always worrying about and always thinking about. Um, you know, figuring out how we can show the user that it's essentially the same piece of work, but with less polygons. How can we make our materials more optimized? How can we, you know, help users uh, understand how to how to use the device better? How can they? Um, yeah, how can we basically do magic behind the scenes to, to make their sketches run more performantly and look better and run faster? Um, I, I guess in my mind, it's still, it's really hard to not talk about kind of like the next big update coming out for Gravity Sketch, which is something we've been working on. Um, at least some of the stuff we've been working on for at least six months now. Um, we're due to upgrade to like the new, like semi-new universal rendering pipeline that Unity's been building. Um, over time. Uh, this isn't out yet, but it should be out this quarter before Christmas, a little bit of a Christmas present. Um, and it's got some really great technology in there, for example, like a rendering batcher that kind of gets rid of the draw call issue that plagues a lot of um, VR development. Um, in, in, in kind of layman's terms, what it means is that the number of objects in your sketch won't make uh, Gravity Sketch slow down anymore in the same way that it used to. Um, you know, like uh, if, if you drew a blade of grass and copied that a hundred times, there'd be like, you'd have to essentially do a hundred calculations to render those. Um, but now in the future, um, it'll be the same as having one object that's kind of like a hundred times as complicated. It's hard to really describe, but that cost of rendering every object is going away. Definitely the really interesting thing about these devices, 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 is they are like pretty unique in that they are a form factor where you can literally walk around a room with them. Um, and that makes something like pass through really interesting because it kind of you know, really gives you that untethered experience. You don't need to worry about where you are in the real world. You can really ground what you're doing in the real world um, and see it and be there and that kind of thing and, and work in the, the context of it. Yeah. And the um, shadows are potential. I mean, you could say, definitely say that we have, like, there is some exploration happening. Yeah, yeah. De- de- it's, it's definitely fair to say there's some exploration happening around getting shadows working on the quest right now. Um, see if that's a Christmas present or not. Yeah, um, I mean, so, you know, we're talking about, like, why would someone buy a Quest 3? Should they buy it over a Quest 2? Should they upgrade from a Quest 2? Um, and how does the Quest Pro fit into all of that? 
And I definitely think, um, I don't know, to me, in my mind, there is good reasons to buy any of those three headsets, depending on the, the use case and this kind of thing. Um, I think the Quest 3, like its, its most killer feature is probably, you know, it's, the Quest 3 has two killer features right now. One is it's simply the most powerful headset. You know, it's got really nice resolution screens, but um, yeah, it, it's simply got C more CPU, GPU, horsepower, more memory, um, which translates basically in Gravity Sketch into being able to draw more things before it starts slowing down, before it starts lagging, before it starts getting uncomfortable. And, um, you know, we, in Gravity Sketch at least, we do everything we can to protect people from the device being the limit of their creativity. But at the end of the day, there's always going to be a wall that you hit where you need to either remove some content or simplify things because the hardware can't keep up with someone's creativity and that kind of thing. And so the Quest, yeah, like is one, one and a half to two times, I'd say, more powerful. Um, the Quest 3 is than the Quest 2. Um, and the Quest Pro is a, similar, is a similar performance to the Quest 2. So the Quest 3 is the most powerful device by far, um, which makes it really compelling on its own. Um, but that's not to say that you can't sketch quite a lot on a Quest 2 or a Quest Pro without hitting a wall. So if someone's thinking about upgrading, I feel like the obvious question is like, are you frequently hitting that wall where the device starts lagging, where you start struggling with performance? Um, because uh, the Quest 3 won't offer too much more if you're not really struggling with performance. The only other killer feature I think that's really important to think about right now is the pass-through. Um, you know, if you've used a Quest 2, you've had a taste of pass-through, it's way better than that. It's in color, it's much higher resolution. Like, what would I want in a Quest 4? Or what would I want in the future and this kind of thing? I think, I don't know, right now, like the, the middle solution is that um, like a lot of the really great features that the Quest 2 and Quest 3 have, for example, pass through and this kind of stuff don't work when you're using them in, in, in a, like a link mode. And so if anything, I would love to see either another Oculus Rift or like a, a revival of Oculus Link and bring it to kind of feature parity with all of these other really cool technologies that Meta have been building. Um, like, but pa pass through is basically the most obvious thing. Like, and the, the trouble is if you have a, if you're used to using it over link and you try and go into pass through, you have to go down to the kind of standalone headset. Um, and that's definitely not as powerful um, as, the, as, the, as the desktop headset. So sometimes you just can't look at models in pass through right now because they're only desktop compatible or something. Um, but looking at like, yeah, where would, where would Meta go? Where would anyone go with a new VR headset? That's honestly a really, really difficult question. Trying to make the pass through so good, you'd actually want to spend all day in the headset or something like that, or at least it would almost be as good as seeing the real world. Definitely one thing that's important to say is like almost none of the VR headsets that are out right now you would want to spend more than, you know, some period of time in, they're not that comfortable. And so finding some way to make them super comfortable, super nice to spend a long time in, honestly, that would be a huge leap. It probably isn't a Quest 4 leap. <clears throat> yeah, maybe it's more like the pro side of things. Um, but yeah, really focusing on comfort so that people can have a great time in there is nice. It'd be really interesting to see like if we can get to a place where the device isn't what is actually i guess powering the experience like um i don't know how realistic it is particularly with latency uh, and hardware costs and cloud rendering and all of this kind of stuff um but yeah like th there's only really two directions you can go one you can try and have a headset that has such a powerful piece of hardware in it it's like a desktop computer but those things use hundreds of watts of energy you know nvidia's latest graphics cards just don't work in a, or, or at least they're as powerful as like a 4090 or something, it's never going to fit in a mobile form factor. And so yeah, do, do, does the device need to be the, the kind of source of the rendering, source of the power? Letting people, yeah, just um, draw with extremely powerful hardware, even if it's not as strapped to their face, could be really interesting. But yeah, maybe we're still not there with internet or the right enough servers globally, I don't know, but it'd be really interesting to see where the power of this device just doesn't matter anymore. It's just like a screen and a really good internet connection. But could there be a better input device? This is an interesting question. Uh, yeah. I, I do remember very early on when in conversations about the Quest 1, Quest 2 and everything, um, Meta were considering changing the layout and it was essentially, it felt like an outcry of people that, that you know, just stick with what you've got. It works and it's good. And it does work and it's good. And they're very comfortable. So I don't know if you can beat them. That's an interesting question. Thank you, Daniel. Appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome.